25 years ago at the Fourth World Conference in Women in Beijing, filmmaker Dr. Bev Ditsi, then co-chair of the Gay and Lesbian Organization of the Witwatersrand, Front, delivered a historic statement for lesbians. Now, in 2020, during the global lockdown, she engaged online with some of the most incredible activists around the world who were behind the campaign not only to walk down memory lane, but to commemorate what will forever be known as the most successful lesbian visibility campaign in her story. Well, she now joins us to chat a little bit more about the film Lesbians Free Everyone, the Beijing retrospective. Well, a very good morning to you, Dr. Ditsi, and thank you for joining us here on Weekend Dawn. I mean, we're just looking at what has transpired 25 years later, arguably also as we uh, commemorated International Lesbian Day on the 8th of October. I mean, the timing of this film and what it's highlighting in terms of social ills and social injustices at large, what is reflected 25 years later? Oh my God, it's been such an exciting journey. I think as soon as somebody goes down memory lane, you start realizing the, 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 the distance that we have come. Um, it's, it's, it's really been incredible. We have made many gains, obviously, as South Africa being the very first country in the world to ever have sexual orientation in our own Bill of Rights and the final constitution of our country, to then seeing the kind of violence against the feminine, the violence against queer people, violence against lesbians, that's just on the increase, not just in the country, but in the world. Um, and also just chatting to all the different people who were also, you know, very much coming up with what is going on in their own countries in terms of how far we've come since um, the Beijing conference 25 years ago. It's, it's really been an incredible journey. Now you've spoken about some of the progressive stances and policies that have transpired the world over for the past 25 years. But looking at what the film has also highlighted, I mean, what gaps have emerged? We're looking at the marginalization of, uh, you know, of, of uh, a community, the LGBTQIA as well, but ultimately how it f affects economic systems, uh, education, health, security, amongst many other social ills. What does that relationship look like? Um, I think, you know, the whole world, in my opinion in particular, is sliding so much towards fascism. Um, it is incredible when you look at countries that call themselves, you know, leaders in the free world and how much violations of human rights are going on there. Um, so we're not just also talking about discrimination against queer people and violence against queer people and what's going on. We've also got the lockdown that's also highlighting a lot of the inequalities and every single aspect. Um, you're looking at how poverty is affecting us. I mean, as a LGBTIQ community, we are also members of the broader community of human beings. Um, mm. It's just that a lot of the time, what affects everyone kind of hits us even a little bit further, just simply because there's so much more that's added. Um, all the different layers. We're finding different people trapped in homes with families that are being abusive because generally we form communities outside of our own um, blood families. We, cho we have chosen families. During lockdown, people have not been able to be with their chosen families. People find themselves not able to access medication, whether you're talking about hormonal medication, you're talking about HIV medication. And I mean, just hunger, depression, um, all of that that has been added on, um, COVID-19 has really highlighted in the biggest, biggest, most glaring ways. Um, but if you're looking at the inequalities worldwide and you, and you look at the violations, even in countries where the laws are there to protect people, the laws are becoming inaccessible. And so really a lot of us believe that fascism is on the rise, mm. um, just the whole world over, and we need to be fighting a little bit harder to make sure that human rights are being protected. Well, I mean, we're all ultimately part of one race, the human race, and, 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 and is a race against time to emancipate half of the world's population, which ultimately will benefit everyone in the greater schemes of things. Mm -hmm. But I want to then focus on the film itself, the process of, you know, yes. gaining all the archive material, particularly as COVID-19 hit. How did that impact the creative process? And uh, what has the reception been like since, um, since you released? Um, the film is, is about to be released mm. to the public in the next um, few days, um, and I'm really looking forward to that. 
one had to be really creative mm. when generally when you when you go about looking for archive um, it's, it's easy access we have um, researchers that are on point the world over I was able to get in touch with lesbian history archives in New York whether it's in Mexico or in the UK the, the difficulty is that buildings were literally shut down so if something was not online already no one was able to go and search and find me the material I was looking for. So I've had to be really creative in how um, I've had to find a way to access um, the material that I needed. But luckily, a lot of us who were at the conference took a lot of pictures. So I'm using a hodgepodge of everyone's personal archives. Um, and, and it's very kind of clear, you can see, you know, just in the first instance, you and I met in Beijing, look, there's the picture, you know. Um, and so, and so it is really a, a journey down memory lane. I mean, we are, we are celebrating, we are commemorating, but we're literally going down memory lane. Some of us had not seen each other since 25 years ago because we go to conferences, we come back from the conferences, and we move on with our lives in our different corners of the world. Um, mm. So it was really incredible to be able to do that with some of my fellow activists and warriors around different parts of the world. Well, as you mentioned in conclusion, I mean, it is a 55-minute film produced by yourself, Dr. Bev Ditsi. And I think just in conclusion, on the back of the film being released and also just commemorating the uh, progression 25 years later, mm -hmm. perhaps also the gaps that have emerged or continue to uh, marginalize, uh, you know, p certain communities. I, I want to know from you what it was like to perhaps receive that honorary uh, doctorate as well this year. Mm -hmm. What is this ultimately doing for you and advancing the cause that you stand for? Uh, I don't know how, what it does. I think just it's good to be recognized. It's, it's good to be seen. I think one can't run away from how, how, how good that felt. Um, you know, I don't get into activism and I don't do what I do for the glory and for the accolades, but when they come, they're really welcome. Um, so just in, just in terms of being recognized, that it, it's a really good feeling. Um, I don't know if it does anything else except for maybe have a lot more doors open and have a, a few more ears listening um, when one speaks. And, and that's always a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's always a good thing, particularly because as a queer person, a lot of the time we are erased. We are, we are, we are so pushed to the sides that we just don't get recognition for a lot of what we do. And when we do, it's when we are very performative, when we are entertaining, and not when we are actually doing any other work. Um, and so it, it really is, is good to, to have that recognition. Well, Dr. Bev Ditsi, we're going to leave the conversation there. Of course, just joining us on our Weekend Dawn Review. Thank you for joining us. As you mentioned, the film is long overdue. Um, obviously, it uh, couldn't have come rather at a better time when the world grapples with issues of COVID-19, uncertain realities, poverty, sexual violence, and femicide, as well as the rise of fascism at large. Again, Dr. Bev Ditsi speaking to us about the events that took place 25 years ago at the, during the Fourth World Conference on Women in Beijing. It's arguably one of the most successful lesbian visibility campaigns in her story.